All right, we're back with more Factorio. Here we go. I am Pax, and today we're going to do a little um, tutorial session on uh, the Mega Smelters. Um, and basically, um, we're just kind of going to celebrate the fact that uh, we, we have in the playthrough currently gotten to the point where... <laughs> Yes, indeed. Our mega iron smelter is uh, just going completely full blast. And so here we see, uh, yes, the 512 uh, fully, or well, uh, yeah, 512 smelters with eight beacons. And um, ultimately, this is giving us um, about 108,000 iron plates per minute. So let's check on. We can just check in the production. Yeah, there we go. 108,000 iron plates per minute. Uh, you know, basically, finally uh, getting fully utilized and fully um, maxed out in terms of both demand and supply. <clears throat> and so I wanted to go over a bit how it works and do a kind of a tutorial and. Um, also just admire the whole <laughs> the whole thing in action and um <clears throat> you know it's one of the best parts of Fact about factoria is when you build one of these crazy builds and uh you really get to see it um going going all out full blast <clears throat> so then the first thing you might notice about how this works is uh yeah, it's kind of surprising, but you can indeed fit a car onto a belt and um, in just this one tile amount of space, squeeze it between beacons and smelters. <clears throat> and then if you also notice that these inserters are not where you would normally expect them to be uh, kind of pulling things off of the belt, but they're pointing actually into this uh, just spot with nothing in it sideways. Um, but Indeed, the inserters pointing sideways adjacent to the belt can um, insert and pull out of the uh, car's inventory as it goes by. And so this all happens because in the game, the car actually has two different hitboxes. So there's a smaller hitbox for um, its like physical extent, and then there's a larger hitbox for actually the inserters. Um, and so you can create this setup where yeah, you have the car sneaking by on uh, one tile of space, and then every smelter is getting uh, touched by eight beacons on both sides. So fully, you know, eight beacon, fully moduled builds. <clears throat> now, basically, um, I usually like to enforce that there are always um, filters in the car's inventories, and so then the advantage of having the cars on belts is that yeah you have these huge inventories of of space and so then you can imagine then the throughput of of this system is um you know quite large so um every car can carry up to 80 slots of items and um then in this case i have the cars timed to um to be spaced out every 1.5 uh, seconds so um, in short, you know, this is maybe 3,000 iron plate per 1.5 seconds, and, you know, this is like 2,500 iron ore per 1.5 seconds, um, all coming through this uh, cars on belts setup. Um, so then to time out the cars on belts, there are these timer circuits, so this red wire is carrying a clock signal. And then there is a little timer circuit way up here. Um, so this is a very simple factorial logic circuit where uh, you can basically take this little decider combinator and have it feed back onto itself and also have a constant combinator outputting, um, you know, the variable C. And then this will just add, add the variable C by one every tick until it reaches 90 and then the whole thing will kind of reset and this makes a clock. Um, and then, uh, since there are 60 ticks per second, um, this spreads the cars out like every uh, one and a half seconds. 
and um, and then you can just put these little um, uh, put the wires onto the belts and actually pause the belts according to the clock uh, and space out the cars like this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and so then now you see um, with the trains actually what I think is also one of the uh, best parts about the cars on belts mechanics is, is actually this interface uh, to different trains and to the train stations and train loadings and so yeah, if you watch a lot of Factorio videos, then um, there is like quite an effort to, you know, figure out how to, how to get the most throughput and on and off of uh, trains. I don't understand why that. Oh wait, no, no, yeah. Um, and so typically, you know, what you might do is, um, you know, just get a single belt per each of these like kind of sections of the train so like I, I would you know at all my you know miners right I'm typically doing you know something like this where I'm getting four four belts of throughput at the train station <clears throat> but if you're careful with the inserters maybe you could do a little bit more um, and so like the most I've ever seen really that's like kind of feasible is actually six six belts on each side so you could get 12 belts in total but um, uh, but what's interesting about the, the cars on belts is that um, you can see that it's actually, it actually looks like it's very fast, and it is. And it's because um, when the inserters go from um, things like the, uh, yeah, the train wagon here and the um, steel chest, um, they drop their constants instantly. So then they're really getting this full through to put of uh, 12 items every swing. And that's also true with the cars. So when the inserters pull onto and off from the cars, they um, pull the entire stack of items instantly. Whereas when the inserters interact with belts, um, it takes time. So if you kind of watch an inserter, even if it's like well fed, you know it has to sit here for a little bit of time to for the items to come in. And um, that's also true. Um, on the output side as that it takes a little bit of time for it to drop the stack and so the inserter interacting with the belt actually slows it down a lot um, but then since the cars don't also are instantly um, you know having their items dropped um, you really get the full throughput of all this and so um, you know if you calculate out just like how much items can the inserters do just running at full speed, um, and you'll see that all the inserters here can pretty much run at full speed. Um, as the train, when while the train he is here, you get something close to um, something like 1,200 items per second. But then, um, since the trains do have to kind of enter and exit, and that takes a little bit of time, <clears throat> um, right? So that amount of time does bottleneck the system a bit. But I think you can get more like 900 items on and off the trains per second, accounting for when you account for this little transition time. Um, and so that's something like 20 belts of throughput over, you know, something that you know would have to take a lot, a lot larger footprint to get something like 12. <clears throat> and then. Um, and so then again, you can see that these inserters actually aren't, you know, touching where the belts are. They're off, offset by one, and then, but then that's in a good spot where they can still reach into the cars. Another thing that's important for the train junction is the um, circuit-based um, balancer. Um, so for this interface to work um, as effectively as it does, it does it does need to be the case that the um, materials do get distributed evenly through all the boxes and so um, well the um, the inserters that actually to interact with the train wagon are not are just normal stack inserters running as fast as they can run um, but the ones that pull onto and off of from the cars um, have these uh, circuit based balancers and so they have a pretty um, simple system for how the logic works. Um, basically, there's a single combinator here that will 
get the um, total sum of all the contents from all the chests and then it will uh, divide this number by um, negative 48 and this negative 48 is um, based on the total number of boxes or steel chests so there's 48 of them and so this essentially makes I'll put the average um, that's in all of the chests uh, and then makes it a negative number and so and then now uh, for each inserter there is a um, green wire di going directly from its corresponding steel chest and the red wire and and since they're both connected the two numbers will add together and then this way um, we can just say if um, the number is less than say 10 so this means that um, your your the amount of uh, stuff in the air chest is sort of less than 10 um, different from the average um, then the inserter will activate and uh, keep all the chest balance uh, and so so for this one since they're all going almost full speed all the time and you don't see it much but um, especially for some of these over here uh, you can see how like uh, the cir circuit balancer sort of regulates the flow of the uh, materials coming off so you know, so these cars are like completely full, so they can't unload. Um, and so then typically the um, boxes sort of later in the priority chain uh, will fill up. Um, but then, uh, you know, the, the balancer ensures that, uh, you know, the, the whole system will slow down to, to allow for some, some, some of the room in the cars to get to the end and, and keep the whole thing in balance. Okay. Yeah, so you can see why then I just kind of designed this train station in this way. So um, I really wanted to make a situation where the trains could go in and out into this these loading stations as quickly as possible. Because, yeah, again, like really to take advantage of the fact that we can get such such a high amount of throughput onto the trains, I, I, we need them to like just be here and loading and unloading, um, you know, all the time. And so... I created this like serial stacker, which has both like an input and an output stacker, so that you know the trains are always ready and waiting to be loaded, um, and then there's always space for the train to exit. Um, and so then, while it's um, you know out here and it's trying to deal with all the traffic, it can be waiting out here while this one gets in, in into the space, and um, you know just make sure that like the uh, Loading and unloading of the trains never never gets interrupted by um, you know the trains trying to make it through this intersection, <clears throat> and then there's a parallel stacker right before the serial stackers just to you know give the trains time to get here and, and get organized and you know have them like fill in to the places they're going while all all the trains are loading and stuff and. Um, and similarly, you actually do kind of, it's nice to also have a parallel stacker on the exit side because, again, you don't want the chains to like gum up in traffic trying to get deal with the intersection. And, um, and then having this parallel stacker also then before, um, you're, you know, a set of places where the trains can decide to go in different directions allows them to, um, you know, if like one direction was kind of clogged up with traffic, other trains could like sneak by and go out in other directions. So, the train network is actually like a huge part of uh, making this making this pretty effective. So then let's just admire the smelter a bit longer as we wrap up this little tutorial session. Um, I do indeed like watching it run at nighttime and um, and especially without. I, I don't like having the. Um, lamps in the smelter builds because it's great to see the glow of all the smelters when they're working together um, and yeah so it's 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 fun to admire the full smelter working and to see all the trains uh, racing in and out and um, to see the junctions with the cars really shining um, so then yeah of course we've then built on this principle to build other designs like the green circuit design and the red circuit design and actually the entire build for the uh, science mega science uh, and uh, so but if you want to uh, check out more then um, there's lots of videos where uh, i go through all this stuff in the actual playthrough 
and uh, let me know uh, if you have any insights or comments in the comment section. Um, until then, next time, um, I'm Paxtorio, and uh, yeah, see you in the next video.